I would like now to introduce our next researcher, uh, David Irwin from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst is going to talk to us a little bit about how he is using the dynamic capabilities of Genie to rapidly assemble slices of different sorts of resources to do now casting, which is very short term weather forecasting for extreme weather conditions. David? Hi. So, yeah, so I'm actually going to be talking uh, about something a little bit different than the presentations you've seen so far. So uh, I'm going to hopefully try and answer the question, uh, what do radars have to do with, with Genie? Um, which is a question I actually, uh, I get asked this question quite a, quite a bit, and there are many derivatives to it. Um, so I'll start by just saying that at UMass, we're the kind of the center of a, a NSF engineering research center that focuses on studying experimental networks of small controllable weather radars. Um, so the point of this research center is basically to design new types of radars that can augment the existing NEXRAD radar system and basically produce better data. These radars are, are less expensive, they're denser, they're closer to the ground where weather actually occurs, so you can sense, uh, sense a lot more than you can with NEXRAD, which is basically the, the radar system that our current you know, weather forecasts you see on a nightly news are, are based off of. And the point I want to get, one point I want to get across here is that designing these radars is just the first step. Um, once you sense data, uh, you have to transmit it somewhere. Uh, you have to do that quickly if there are hazardous weather conditions. Um, you have to potentially store it somewhere, archive it. Um, then you have to run computations on, on it to, uh, to predict what's going to happen in the future. Um, and the second point I want to make here is that it's costly to dedicate resources for really rare events. You know, if there are just clear skies out there, you don't want to have a, a big fat network pipe from your radar all the way to your data center where you have a bunch of idle resources just sitting there waiting for a hazardous weather event to occur. Um, so you need, you, know, you need your sensors, your bandwidth, your storage, and your computation, but you don't want to dedicate it. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about here is, yeah, so how can we use Genie's ability to dynamically provision all sorts of resources uh, to do short-term now casting? Um, so what I mean by now casting, Mark said a little bit about it, is really short-term weather forecasts. And that's what these, these radars are actually very good for that because they produce really good data, and I'll show some, some figures later, that's very close to the ground and very accurate. And so it's not, not as coarse as NEXRAD, so you can actually see, uh, do really good predictions what's going to happen a minute in the future, 10 minutes in the future, 15 minutes in the future. And that's really important, you know, if a tornado is coming or a tor tornado forms and it's going to hit your house or, or whatever. So I also want to say that this is a real problem right now. Um, so I just pulled these, these uh, headlines off the web, but this is Met Service is essentially the National Weather Service equivalent in New Zealand. Um, and they, these articles are basically about them wanting to use cloud computing resources because they don't want to make a huge capital investment in dedicating network pipes and data centers uh, to process their weather and basically saying that they, they actually can't do this now uh, because they can't get their data uh, to these clouds fast enough. Um, so this is exactly what, what Genie's meant to, meant to hopefully uh, enable. So that's today. Those are, those are essentially the equivalent of NEXRAD radars in New Zealand. And the NEXRAD radars in the US, if you guys don't know, there are about 159 of them that cover the entire country. Um, if CASA has its way, this problem's going to get a lot worse um, because we want to litter the country with thousands of smaller, less expensive radars that produce this much better data, but it's lots of data coming from lots more sources. Uh, rather than 159, we're talking about thousands. So we really do need some, some sort of infrastructure if we don't want to dedicate you know, network pipes for thousands of radars and data centers to process all of this data um, that can dynamically provision sensing, networking, storage, and computing resources on demand. So just to give you an example of this, um, so we have a variety of test beds in CASA, radar test beds with these experimental radars. I'm going to focus on our UPRM student test bed, uh, which is actually led by a PhD student at UMass, uh, Jorge Trabal. He's, he's in the audience. He actually did a lot of, a lot of work for this. Um, and then Professor Sandra cruz Pohl and Professor Jose Colom down at UPRM. Um, I should mention Jorge is going to be a professor down there uh, starting next year. Um, so what we see here in this figure is on the left we see uh, an X-RAD radar in Puerto Rico and what it would see during a storm in my guess. Um, so Puerto Rico turns out to be a really good test case for this because it's an island, a lot of coastline, there are a lot of localized weather condition. It's also very mountainous. So the NEXRAD radar, which is in the middle of the country, can actually see a lot of these localized weather conditions around the edges. 
Um, and then here on the right, we see what basically their test bed can see. Um, so you can basically see that it's, it's not quite as pixelated. Um, it's, it's much more fine grained. Um, what we see on the right there in, in that image there is basically live data that's coming in from their test bed right now. Uh, so it's actually, uh, it, it's, it's sunny in Puerto Rico right now. So that's what you're seeing there is actually just ground clutter. Um, it's actually, we have another test bed up in Massachusetts. It's actually, it turns out, sunny in Massachusetts right now. Um, <laughs> it, it, it may rain or snow t uh, tomorrow. Um, and so I just want to say too that uh, even without kind of the forecasting, these types of radars uh, can do really cool things. Um, so if you look at the YouTube video that's playing there, that's actually a stadium, in my guess, uh, was built for the Caribbean games. Um, and that's a lighting tower. And these are some winds that were happening actually on the day of the games. Um, and it's going to fall uh, and crash. So uh, that water spout basically leveled uh, that stadium. And they had to delay the games. Um, the, the, these guys' test bed, I mean, it, it actually saw that. Uh, without any kind of processing, it, it could just see it because the data was better. Um, and potentially integrating some, some now casting, as we like to call it, into that, we could actually predict these things in the future. But just by seeing uh, these weather systems develop, they were actually able to issue warnings uh, ahead of what NextRad could do. So enough for the motivation, on to the demo. Um, so part of the demo background here uh, is we're using the ORCA control framework. Um, and the idea here is that we would provision uh, a diverse slice of resources on demand. Um, as weather, a weather system approaches. Um, so in this case, we're actually using uh, radars from, from UMass and uh, the VICE project. Uh, we're using a networking, uh, various network, you know, the topologies right there, um, uh, using NLR and then Ben Rinsey uh, down in North Carolina. And then we're using actually storage and computation across a number of these sites. We're using uh, VMs at UMass and RINSI. Um, and then we're also using uh, resources in the cloud, so Amazon resources. So for those of you not familiar with Amazon, uh, you can essentially get uh, machines and storage uh, for some money. And actually, if you watch that budget over there, uh, we're actually using uh, some money right now as we're, we're running this demo. Uh, it should, should be ticking down slowly as uh, data flows. Um, and what you see on the right there is actually the, the web portal for Orca. So, so these guys actually did a, a plenary demonstration uh, at a previous GEC showing kind of the dynamic provisioning of this. And I'm not going to kind of go into it now, but um, those are basically all of the resources we, we've requested for this demo um, across a number of different sites. Um, and so Ilya and those guys, uh, they actually have a paper on some of that um, that I'm sure they'd be happy to, to, to talk to you guys about um, if you have questions about that. But what I am going to focus on is kind of how you kind of ha how a now casting workflow that our actual CASA scientists use maps onto all of these resources and what it actually does. OK, so this is just a very high level overview of a now casting workflow. So basically, raw live data comes in from radar nodes, um, from multiple radar nodes. Uh, in this case, it's going to be flowing into archival storage. Uh, we're going to be hosting that on Amazon S3. Um, archived as net CDF data, which is a common data format in the meteorology community. Um, then that data flows actually out into a, a simple publish subscribe service that meteorologists use, um, and it's called LDM. Um, and this makes this, these data products available for other people um, that want to pull them off like weather stations and, and do some processing. Um, so we're actually going to be pulling them off at RINSI and churning on some now casting software that has been developed at Colorado State. Um, and basically these guys are, are researchers who are into just looking at these new radars and seeing how they can uh, do better predictions in the future. And then what we're going to do just for this demo is send these back over our gene network and just post some images to the web so you guys can see those as they, they update. OK, so here's our topology um, for this demo. So um, we are generating, we, we're actually generating live data from, from Vice, but since it's sunny, we're going to use archive data for what you guys are going to see. You wouldn't actually see anything otherwise. Um, and I'll, I'll just say a little bit about these, these, these radars. Um, beyond what they're doing down in Puerto Rico, we're actually virtualizing these as well. Since these radars are steerable, um, there's a lot you can do with them in the radar community to, to steer them in different ways to do different types of prediction. So tracking a storm may be slightly different steering mechanism than estimating how much rain is happening or trying to see which direction the wind is blowing. 
Um, and so we actually have some work uh, to make those radars available for, for people to experiment with. Um, but for this demo, we're going to be sending data down to, to S3 and then archiving it using an archival service we've built as part of a, a Genie project here to archive these NetCDF files for other researchers to use to run their now casting software over, and then making them available via one of these LDM feeds that are used in the meteorology community um, over an EC2 node. And so this, this is part of a, the, actually the DICLOUD project. And the, the main focus here is that we're actually using a proxy. Since we're using Amazon and spending money, we want to be able to budget this money. So you know, if you just make Amazon resources available for Genie users, uh, they could spend a lot of money, and that would be bad. Um, so we want to be able to apply budgets uh, to this money so that they can't, can't actually spend more than, uh, more than what we, we say that they can spend. It actually doesn't cost that much. Um, uh, it can cost much over time, but if you're just, you know, spinning things up for rare events, you know, you're, you're actually doing pretty well. You know, 10 cents an hour, 2 cents an hour, they actually the prices are constantly falling. But in this case, we're going to basically just send this radar data down to these VMs we provisioned uh, uh, in North Carolina as part of the, the BIN network. Um, and what the nodes down there are going to do is they're going to ingest these multi-radar data feeds. Um, they're going to merge and grid the multi multiple radar data, then they're going to churn on it and generate these one minute, five minute, and 10 minute now casts. And then finally, what they're going to do, you can see the, over there the now casts are actually updating every second. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about what that is. But then they're basically just sending these images back uh, over this NOR link uh, through Starlight, which is uh, hooking, us, uh, hooking us up uh, with, with Rinsey, back and posting on the web. So what we see on this, this screen over here is uh, the various now casting products. So on the far, uh, your left, um, is the present. And then we've actually kind of changed it in time so you can kind of see a little bit of what it looks like. Um, the one minute, five minute, and 10 minute basically mean what I would have predicted one minute ago for the present, what I would have predicted five minutes ago for the present, what I would have predicted 10 minutes ago for the present. Um, so you can see kind of how, how accurate they are and how they get more accurate over time. Um, but those are just churning along. So I actually want to say a few things just about the number of different universities and the number of different technologies here we've used. So we, at UMass, and, you know, uh, we kind of put this together. Um, but uh, the guys that, down at University of Puerto Rico, my guys, Jorge, and those guys, they're actually designing these radars and building hardware. Um, and so we actually haven't uh, d done as much of that with Genie, um, but we really leverage the, the hardware that they're they're building. Um, the folks at Colorado State, Professor Chandra Shikhar, um, they're actually focused on you know, how to do better predictions, now casting predictions, uh, given radar data. Um, and then the guys at Rincey Duke and at Starlight who are actually uh, building the control framework that we're using to get these resources um, is certainly critical. Uh, so I want to just, from this, this simple demo, I just, I just want to give kind of two, two take home points. Um, so Genie is really critical uh, for kind of next generation applications beyond just kind of core in-network applications. So this now casting is just one good example of how these experimental radar systems that you know, are, are being developed kind of outside the distributed systems and networking community could use Genie. In fact, they need something like Genie, and I don't, I don't even think they know that yet. Um, but if you were to develop you know, and deploy these radar systems at scale, um, you're just going to be inundated with so much data you can't you're not going to be able to deal with it. Um, and so some of the Genie capabilities here are just sliceability and virtualization. Um, federation, since we're using resources from a number of different sites, and then network programmability. I mean, the second thing is that Genie can provide domain scientists like the guys at Colorado State, especially down at UPRM, a platform for building not just kind of their um, small piece, but a, a, a broader system that's tightly integrated with sensing um, storage, networking, computing. I mean, almost any engineering discipline uh, is going to use some form of computing. And in this case with radars, uh, it's going to need networking, uh, some pretty significant networking. Um, and so we're actually hoping to, to engage more domain scientists in CASA uh, moving forward. This was kind of just an example for us to show them how uh, the system can work. And then hopefully uh, extend our Genie network uh, down to Puerto Rico, because uh, right now we actually don't have the, the, NL, the NLR links uh, down to there yet. Um, but that, uh, that concludes my demo. So um, I just want to say that uh, Jorge and uh, the PIs, Prashant and uh, Michael Zinker, 
are out there so they can answer questions as well after the talk. So thanks.